In this beginner level pen and ink tutorial, we'll be illustrating a wondrous border in three steps. It's easy to make, but not quick. If you like drawing details, you'll love this project. I'm using standard supplies, sketching paper, pencil, and such. You'll find the links to my tools plus additional resources in the description below. First, we'll design the elements to construct our wondrous border. Using a pencil and your sketching paper, We'll draw five leaves. Start with a single stroke for the stem, then add the outline of the leaf shape, one side at a time. Complete the stem while drawing the second side of the leaf. Draw four more outlines. Now we'll vary the shapes of our designs and add details. We'll start with the edges of the shapes. Examples of shapes can be a fold on one side, serrated edges, dense, lobbed, parted, however you like. For details, we'll add veins. Position some of the vein lines at an angle like fish bones and some with a staggered effect. Next, we'll create six floral designs. I'm using geometric stencil templates to make circles. Start with six circles of numerous sizes, then quarter each circle. We quarter the circle so that it's easier to mirror the design. It's a trick to keep our drawing in proportion. Use the center line dashes from the template to mark the center lines, then use the edge of the template as a ruler. If you don't have this tool, circular objects will work or you can draw freehand. I've also drawn a smaller circle in the middle of each one. Create flower variations by overlapping petals clockwise or draw petals on the guidelines then add further petals within the gaps. Continue to develop your creations. They don't need to be polished drawings, just sketches. These sketches are important though as they will guide the border design. For the butterfly, we'll go ahead with two designs. Quarter two circles. These circles are slightly larger than the flowers. Draw a small circle for the head. Attach an elongated, <laughs> elongated teardrop for the body. Then extend another slender shape for the tail. Attach a main wing on both sides of the body, aim for symmetry, then smaller wings tucked underneath. Add the antenna, add markings on the wings and refine the shapes as you like. If you've previously done this bird tutorial, then use that drawing now. There's no background, so it's an ideal subject for a vignette border. Otherwise, the design we create will work for any subject. You can draw the border today and add a subject to the composition afterwards. Using a ruler and light pressure on your pencil, draw a one inch border half an inch from the edges of your inking paper. Mark the center of the border with a dash. Draw a curvy line roughly in the center of the border boundaries from top to bottom. Aim for smooth and silky, not bumpy. Pair your silky line parallel with another to create a vine. Mark the halfway points, the middle of the picture plane with a light dash. Starting from the top of the border, moving towards the bottom, add the leaf stems. Stagger them in an upward direction until you reach that center mark. Then flip the stems to a downward direction. Don't draw too many. Reserve free space between the stems to fit the other elements. Now draw leaf shape outlines onto the stems. Keep your drawing loose and the shapes varied to reflect our previous designs. Remember to keep the pressure light on your pencil. With the stencil template, draw a circle at each corner of your border. Oh, and it makes sense to quarter them at the same time. Continue to add various size circles on the vine, starting from big to medium circles as you fill the remaining space. Imagine the elements are growing from the vine. They would naturally overlap and intertwine. 
We're not concerned about how the elements are overlapping. That comes later. I've gone ahead and drawn in the butterflies based on the designs we drafted earlier. Proceed to drawing details for the leaves and flowers. This part is efficient since we've already created a guideline. We just follow that plan. Now's the time to decide which elements will be on top and or underneath. Erase construction lines as best as you can and re-emphasize what you've chosen to overlap by going over those strokes. Again, keep a light touch as not to dent the paper. To complete our design, we'll balance gaps and make the piece look extra special by adding small thorns on the vine and tiny random circles and crescents. Begin inking the border from top to bottom, starting with the corner flower. As you make your way down the border, ink the elements that sit on the top layer of the composition first. I'm using a dip pen with India ink. If you're using fine liner pens, a medium sized tip like an O3 is perfect to outline this design. Take your time, enjoy the process. Continue to vary how the elements overlap to achieve a lively arrangement. Once you're satisfied with the embellishing details, we'll make our design pop by rendering a background texture. I've switched to a smaller nib, equivalent to an O1 tip if you're using fineliner pens. The background consists of evenly spaced lines. Draw the lines in a diagonal direction within the pencil guidelines. It's best not to push the pace. Take your time. Periodically, take a step back and double check that your inking is going as planned. Mistakes can happen. I blundered here, texturing the vine by mistake, and here, ink landed on the bird's beak. When that happens, it means I'm rushing or I'm getting tired, so I take a break. Whiteout doesn't look good on original artwork. One solution is to add more marks in the blunder area. If that fails, well, I try to take it in stride. As a bonus step, it might be fun to add a dash of color. I used um, gold ink to accent the ornaments. Whatever color medium you have on hand will work for small spots of color. Once the ink has completely dried, erase the pencil lines from your design and congrats! That concludes our pen and ink wondrous border. I hope that you enjoyed this simple process. If you did, give it a like and have a look at my other tutorials to find a subject or your next border illustration. I'll see you on the next one.